Welcome on into the Wolverine TV. Clayton Safey here with EJ Holland. It is a big week for Michigan football heading into a marquee matchup Saturday night primetime against Washington at the Big House. Tons of recruiting visitors will be in attendance. We're going to break down the top five and then we're going to give you a bonus at the end as well. Uh, but you cannot talk about visitors uh, even though we forgot him at first in our last video, but you cannot talk about visitors for this weekend uh, and not talk about Damani Jackson, the five-star USC defensive back commit, uh, who obviously still has a little bit of interest in the Wolverines uh, and would love to see them pull out a win here. And you never know what could happen. Uh, Damani suffered a season-ending injury last week, so you know thoughts and prayers go out to him. But EJ, you broke the news that he was visiting. You were able to reconfirm that he will still be on campus even after the injury. Uh, just how important is it that he's going to be here in, in town? Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, like we've mentioned in previous videos, he could have just come, you know, later in the year for the Ohio State game, enjoyed it since his family is from Ohio. Uh, but instead, Damani's coming in for an, un for an official visit uh for this game and could return for an unofficial visit for that ohio state game i think it shows that he really is interested in michigan it's not like usc is the beacon of stability right now you know a lot of question marks surrounding clay helton so if you get a win here and you have that huge atmosphere and with him already you know growing up a michigan fan with his dad growing up a michigan fan i think you have a chance to take full advantage and really establish yourself as a, a true player to flip Damani Jackson, things kind of died off a little bit after he committed to USC. Um, but I really do think that Michigan with a win, with, you know, a sense of stability, with a stronger, you know, end to the season as well, Michigan's going to have to continue the success if they want to flip Damani Jackson later on. But I think that this is a great starting point. On top of that, he'll get to visit with a uh, good friend, Will Johnson, uh, Will's father, Dion, an ex-Wolverine, has developed a good friendship with Randy, Damani's dad. So I think the stars are all kind of lining up for Michigan to really make itself a real player to flip Damani. And, and he kind of mentioned the two schools that he's looking at are Michigan and Alabama. Um, and, and I think that, you know, Michigan is, again, a legitimate option here. Yeah, so obviously huge news. So we'll keep an eye on him. Uh, throughout the weekend and beyond. And then our next guy, Josh Connerly, Rivals 100 offensive lineman. Coincidentally enough, out of Washington. Washington is also a major player in his recruitment. Um, but, you know, the fact that this one's in the big house, the fact that Michigan's favored to win, and again, it's, it doesn't mean they're going to win, uh, and it makes it probably even more important with Connerly uh, that they do win. Uh, but just getting him again on campus uh, is going to be huge as well. Yeah, so with Connerly, Washington was considered the early favorite. I think they've dropped off a little bit. Their loss to Montana was embarrassing. So this is the great option. This is a great chance for Michigan to take full advantage of that, to beat Washington in the big house in a tremendous, you know, atmosphere in front of 100,000 plus fans, I think can um, give Michigan that added bonus. I think they are already major players here. They hosted him for the big house barbecue. They obviously are getting him back on campus for the official visit. I think Michigan even has a slight edge here. I, I really do. I think the school that I'm even more concerned about with Connerly is USC at this time. But Michigan has a chance to make a true statement with Connerly and his family who are all coming in. And I know after spending time with uh, with Connerly in Seattle, he's uh, you know elated to, to make his way to Ann Arbor and really get that game day atmosphere feel. Yeah, so that'll be big as well. Speaking of big, great transition there. Uh, Kenneth Grant, defensive tackle. We're talking about a kid that's six foot five, three hundred and forty pounds out of Merrillville, Indiana. Uh, high on Michigan as well. And EJ, you believe that he's properly ranked as a three star? Is that right? <laughs> he's one of the most underrated defensive linemen in the country, uh, if not the most. On top of that, he's been a priority for Michigan. Uh, for a long, long time. Uh, they've made him, you know, the number one guy at the nose tackle position. On top of that, um, you know, right now I think it's really Michigan and Ohio State, and Michigan's pushing a lot harder. I think that with Grant, he just wants to get that sense of stability, and a big win over Washington will kind of create that. On top of that, he's developed 
really good relationships with the staff. Sean New has done a nice job here, but also with some of the commits, Miles Pollard and Will Johnson. This will be his third visit with both of those guys, and I know they text all the time too. Uh, Grant's very much a family guy. His mom was really impressed with Michigan's academics and just the overall culture when she visited for the Big House Barbecue, uh, and she'll be back on campus with him this weekend. And, and I think this is the, the weekend where Michigan needs to kind of make that push and close the door with Grant. And speaking of closing the door, Michigan's had a chance with Deion Walker, a four-star defensive tackle out of Detroit Cats Tech. Six foot seven, listed as 356. He's lost a little bit of weight, uh, you know, but that's what he's listed as on Rivals. And he is a guy that has improved a ton over the last year, uh, you know, now, you know, making it even more important that Michigan's able to land him. How big do you think this Washington game is and the fact that he's going to be back on campus uh, for his recruitment? It's huge. Um, you know, I, I he made several visits this summer. You know, at one point we did think he was going to pull the trigger and commit to the Wolverines, but he's kind of held off. Kind of the same thing with Kenneth Grant. It's like he wants to commit, but he wants a reason to commit. And, you know, look, both of these guys, it's not that they don't love Michigan or, or love the staff or love the aura around Ann Arbor and what it means to be a Wolverine and all that good stuff. They just want stability. They want to know who they're going to be playing for down the line. And I think a win over Washington, a strong start to the season, gives both of them the sense of stability. And, and it's really a similar situation. I think this could be the nudge to for either Walker or, or Grant, and both obviously big needs and top overall targets this cycle. Definitely. And sticking on the defensive side of the ball for our fifth guy, but not our final. Again, we have another bonus, or we have a bonus at the end, Lander Barton, uh, a four-star outside linebacker out of Salt Lake City. EJ, you were recently out there to see him, uh, and obviously have gathered a ton of intel on him. But Michigan made, you know, kind of a behind the scenes, or not behind the scenes, but kind of a covert operation a visit to see him at a satellite camp. Jim Harbaugh personally uh, going out there to see him this summer. So obviously a priority. We talked about earlier this week on one of our shows, uh, you know, how Michigan is thin right now when it comes to linebacker recruiting. They have Aaron Alexander, uh, you know, specifically inside linebacker recruiting, but they have him there, but he's more of a project. Lander Barton would be a big land, and this weekend could be a big weekend uh, towards landing him. Yeah, I think with uh, Lander Barton, look, Michigan's in his top three along with Utah and Texas. He has a lot of family ties to Utah, but at the end of the day, um, you know, he remains a top overall target for Michigan. They've made him a top target and they truly feel like they can pull Lander Barton out of Utah. They've invested a lot of resources in him. Um, and I, I really feel like right now, uh, Michigan's probably tied for second with Texas. But, you know, that could change if Michigan can convince him, hey, build your own legacy, leave Salt Lake City. Uh, come play for the winningest program in the country in a scheme that fits you. And Lander really, really does like what Mike McDonald is doing with his scheme. Uh, you never know. I think the fact that Barton's rewarding Michigan with an official visit speaks volumes. And so while there's work to do, uh, that's, that work is going to be done this weekend. Bonus time uh, for five-star defensive tackle, Walter Nolan, uh, a guy that has had a crazy recruitment, Back and forth, it looked like there was a chance Michigan might have led at one point in the summer heading into the 4th of July, uh, coming off of a big visit. Um, where do things stand, I guess, with Walter Nolan right now? And, hey, I mean, Michigan's out of his top three, but he's obviously – he's kept it – you know, he's been very adamant that his recruitment is still open despite continuing to narrow things down. So it's interesting uh, the way he's going about it, but it's obviously not a bad sign for Michigan that they're still in the running – and that he's coming on campus. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at it as a positive that he's coming on campus with both of his younger brothers and his mother. Uh, but with Walter, I, I think we've all made it pretty clear that his biggest factor is going to be NIL. Um, and so Michigan has a lot to offer in that regard. It's just kind of a murky situation with how NIL is being handled by different schools. Michigan being left out of his top three, I think, because of that. But at the same time, you know, he still has family in the Detroit Metro. His mom still really values what Michigan uh, can offer both on and off the field. And uh, he has also developed some friendships with guys 
you know, committed to Michigan right now, including Will Johnson, Cody Jones, who's his childhood friend. So there are ties there. This He's still really, you know, familiar with the staff and close to guys like Ron Bellamy and Sean Nua. I'm not overly optimistic about where Michigan stands with Walter Nolan heading into the visit. But at the same time, it, anytime you can get a five-star defensive tackle on campus, uh, that's already made an unofficial visit, I, I think uh, it is definitely a positive. So we'll see where things, you know, go with the uh, Walter Nolan uh, drama show. Yeah, and it might be best case. Like, let's say hypothetically, and I'm not predicting this to happen, not even close, but let's say Michigan does land Walter Nolan. Right now the expectations are down here. They're super low. There was a time when people were pretty hopeful, and I think rightfully so, based on uh, how the recruitment was playing out. Uh, so maybe for Michigan fans now, you kind of roll your eyes like, oh, he's this guy again. But at the same time, there's still a sliver of a chance, and now the expectations are low. So if something good happens on the Walter Nolan front, it would be an absolute coup for the Wolverines. So look at it like that if you're a Michigan fan, and I think everything will be all right. But a huge weekend coming up. Keep it locked at thewolverine.com for full coverage, not only of the Michigan-Washington game in the lead-up during the game and after the game, but also Michigan football recruiting will have recruit reactions. EJ will be all over all of that, so keep it locked again at thewolverine.com, and we'll see everybody next time.